himself funding. He has um, hurt people's health, and we would like to make it so that no politician, because of either religious or cultural uh, positions, can stand in the way of people's overall health. Now, I know it's... We, no, the, the stem cell research. Let, let's understand that when he, they stopped... Uh, infant uh, stem cell research, okay? There's still adult stem cell research, and it's actually adult stem cell research that they've had all the advances from. They haven't had uh, any any advances from fetal stem cell research. So you can do things in a way that doesn't violate people's rights. For example, we have prohibitions against uh, doing things to people without their informed consent because of things that were done during the Nuremberg trials. They were making the case, uh, uh, they made the case with Nazi scientists, with German scientists, that and the greater good of humanity, they could do things to people without their informed consent, horrific things to people without their informed consent. So there are some ethical checks that we want to put on medical uh, progress that people do. We don't just say, well, if, if, it, if we're going to benefit potentially from this medically, we're going to remove those checks. So it is valid, I think, to have some ethical checks. So I, I feel that if we don't make decisions about what we uh, put into our own bodies, and we are nothing but slaves to people. I don't think that the federal government ought to be able to make any of those determinations. But I think it's also very important that we, uh, uh, I, I'm concerned about uh, the idea that we would, would mandate support uh, from the government, because I've seen how that turns around very quickly. We're out of time for this segment. <laughs> I began to get into iodine a few years ago because it was helping me and my family so much get healthy and detoxify. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. And I know this for a fact. Nobody else has got iodine based on these pure crystals, ladies and gentlemen. For a limited time, experience the ancient power of Survival Shield X2. I believe our research is conclusive. This is the best iodine out there. Take advantage of this at InfoWarsLife.com. And why wearing a Hillary for President t-shirt might get you punched in the face. They thought it said Hillary for President. He said, I was seconds away from sending my bar back over here to, to punch you in the face. Since you're wearing a Hillary for Prison shirt, you don't have to buy drinks here. Everything's on the house. Hillary for President! Hillary's not surging, I tell you that. They're not saying that. They're not saying that. Thank you. Have a Donald Trump endorses Hillary for prison. Get your Hillary for prison 2016 t-shirt at the InfoWars store. And on the back, it says legalize freedom. Show your disapproval of Hillary by buying your t-shirt today. But what she's done is criminal. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Uh, and uh, Professor, uh, continuing uh, uh, here today, uh, talk about your book. Talk about you know the wide-ranging uh, situation that we're dealing with. So the book really is about what the future of artificial intelligence is going to bring. Most people agree that in the next 20 to maybe 100 years, we're going to see something developed on the level of human intelligence. How is that going to change society? How is that going to impact all of us? My book aims to make sure that the humanity is going to benefit from this technology, not get hurt in some really significant way. So that's essentially the main main theme of a book. It discusses ways we can make those technologies safer, uh, hack-proof them, uh, make them serve common people. Break down for the common person out there exactly the type of uh, scenarios that could unfold and have already unfolded uh, with these systems. So... If you uh, realize the number of different jobs we have outsourced to artificial intelligence systems, uh, they can already control nuclear power plants, airlines, uh, stock trading. Essentially, 
uh, anything of significance is not done by people anymore. And this trend only gets more and more severe. At some point, we'll have computers controlling everything. And if there is a bug in a system or if an enemy hacks into the system, this could have devastating effects on, on the whole society. And of course, that really, from my research, has been the DARPA plan the whole time. Get the whole world to adopt this system, build back doors into it. The West then builds the giant cybersecurity commands to offensively take over the world, Professor, uh, and then build the back doors in to where they can use it to suppress and track the general public and even predict the future of mass movements. Uh, that's basically, from my research, what the Pentagon admits they're doing. I am not familiar with any insider plans. I can notice things like NSA distributing cryptographic algorithms, which seems like a counterintuitive thing since they're trying to break those. So if there was a backdoor in their hashing algorithm, for example, I wouldn't be surprised. Professor Yampolsky is our guest, and you can find out more about him by checking out uh, his book. And we'll put a screenshot up on uh, the screen for people uh, that are watching us on television so they can uh, get the name of that book. It's Artificial Superintelligence, a Futuristic uh, Approach. And you can actually see one of the, the professor's interviews with us right there, Skynet Rising, the AI threat to humanity exists. My issue is, are you more concerned about breakdowns in the system uh, or, or governments using these to dominate or an actual uh, AI uh, type artificially aware uh, system coming online and, and then that that decides to take us out like Terminator? All of the above. My job is to make sure everybody's safe so I can't ignore any opportunities, any options. Uh, it's uh, easier to study and easier to justify uh, scenarios where someone is hacking into the system externally. Something like a self-aware AI system going crazy is really futuristic. We're not quite at that level yet, but uh, something like a government putting a back door to control the system, that's quite realistic. That's standard computer security. What do you think of what Ray Kurzweil has to say? Because for me, it's more like a comic book, the way he puts things out. And he admits he's starting really a new religion. And they're saying, you'll either merge with the machines or you'll be stepped on like a bug. Uh, and, and, and they're selling this utopian view. But when I look at the real technological development and what the establishment says they're really building, it's more in line uh, with something like Elysium, the new movie coming out with uh, Matt Damon. Uh, Kurzweil is probably the world's number one expert in that field. I mean, he's amazing at predicting what future of technology is going to be. He precisely predicted the year a computer will defeat a, a human chess uh, champion. He predicted a lot of other technologies. Uh, he is, in my opinion, somewhat overly optimistic about how beneficial technology will be without uh, spending as much time on possible negative side effects, which I think are just as important. Uh, with his recent appointment as head of engineering at Google, he definitely has financial resources and other capacity to uh, make a lot of his uh, dreams come true. I wouldn't be surprised if they had a very successful AI program at Google as a result of uh, Ray Kurzweil's work. But my issue is the technocrats, I've studied who's running this, and they openly say we may just get rid of everybody once this new level of evolution takes place. We're talking about genocide here and people playing God, and I don't think the public is even aware that Ray Kurzweil is able to predict a lot of what's coming in the future because he's an insider and kind of their front man. He's obviously a, a, a very smart, a big inventor. He is basically the public face of what they're planning to do is my point. I mean, I'm not even an engineer. I go off of what they say they're going to do. And so that's why he knows so much about the goals. I mean, he wants a technocratic world government run by an AI supercomputer where, where we're reportedly going to be given eternal life by giving up our humanity and merging with machines. Sounds like a nightmare to me. I want you to kind of lay out for us uh, the two different approaches to AI and kind of get an idea of where we are in terms of uh, current research on this. Uh, you disagree with Ray Kurzweil on the eventual outcome. He's someone who thinks that we're going to merge with machines in a kind of cyborg way. Uh, he also sees a utopian future. You're very concerned about this in terms of its conclusion. 
But I think you both kind of are taking the same approach to artificial intelligence, aren't you, in terms of modeling the human brain? Well, uh, to, well my, my best friend is uh, Ben Gersel, and mm -hmm. he, he and Ray, Ray Kurzweil, I consider them the two guys probably, well, one of those two will be the first, I think, to achieve genuine human-level artificial intelligence. And Ben Ben's way, I call his approach just simply the engineering approach. In other words, do whatever you like. You know, just take some idea and engineer it and see if you can get artificial intelligence out of it. And that's pretty much the approach that uh, artificial intelligence researchers have been taking for, God, six, 60, 60 odd years. And they've not been successful. We, we still don't live in an era of artificial, artificially intelligent machines. And the other broad approach is simply copy the brain. Now, we know that approach eventually will pan out because you know, we only have to look at ourselves as the living proof that, that it's possible to put molecules together in a certain way and, and produce an intelligent, conscious uh, creature. You know, ourselves, human beings, we're, we're the living proof that it can be done. Nature has found a way. But the bottleneck with that problem is we don't really know what intelligence is yet. So, uh, we, don't, we don't have enough uh, knowledge of the detailed structure of the human brain. You know? what, and that's, what, a, what and that's a good question, Dr. DeGaris, because how do you define intelligence? I mean, I remember decades ago people talking about IBM's chess playing programs and talking about that as being artificial intelligence. That's not really autonomous thinking. That's uh, highly programmed. Uh, it's running through a lot of different probabilities and possibilities and, and doing it in a way that is faster than humans. But it's essentially relying on the programming of humans. It's not autonomous, independent thinking. How would you define uh, artificial intelligence. I think you're talking about something completely different with Artilex, aren't you? Yeah, well, uh, well in intelligence means just you know, the ability to solve problems quickly. And mm -hmm. the, the more difficult the problem, you know, by definition, the higher the, higher the intelligence. So, uh, you know, my good friend Ben, in, in fact, will you, will you be interviewing him at some stage? Yeah, we'd like to, yes. Yes, yes we'd yeah. like to. Oh, yeah. oh, well, well, if you... you <laughs> I, I don't have to twist his arm a little. You know, ben, ben would be very willing. So uh, Ben's big thing is artificial general intelligence, which sort of answers your question, because uh, today's AI is essentially very narrow. Mm -hmm. It's very specific and detailed, uh, applied uh, artificial intelligence to specific problems. Like, like Google's probably the best example of, of AI. But uh, Ben's thing is AGI, with the emphasis on the G, meaning general. So a, a, a general artificial intelligence could, could solve just about anything, right? It, 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 it would be uh, you know, a master of many, many different approaches to things. And if one approach doesn't work, well, it, it tries something else and, and, and so on until, until it solves the problem, which, which is pretty well what we do. We, we, we have zillions of modules in our brain that uh, specialize in lots of little tasks, and, and they combine forces. And if one approach doesn't work, it will try something else until it solves the problem or it gives up. Well, that's it for our show tonight. But be sure to go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a free trial. You can see the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, all right there on prisonplanet.tv. Also, go to our YouTube page, the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. You can see all the great reports there as well as, well, don't forget to check out the sidebar. You can see the side channels for... Paul Just Watson, myself, Leanne McAdoo, David Knight, and the rest of the crew. I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again tomorrow night. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockout's it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, Valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. 
and it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.